in the state general assembly are saying nope 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 this has no chance of passing no 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 we don't believe in red flag laws so we're going to talk about that later in the program but first Guys, I have someone in the studio who wants to be your president, not your president of a civic club, not your president of, I don't know, some some rotary club, president of the United States. It is Roland Roberts. Welcome. I have to be honest, had not heard of you before last night, which I, you're probably getting that a little bit sure. as you travel across sure. the country. So let's get to know you. Roland Roberts, the second... Where are you from and what's your background? It, it, seriously, guys, he's running for president. He's filed the paperwork. Yep, filed the paperwork, announced January 20th, and uh, we're fourth in the power rankings and fourth in the money. So, yeah. uh, Which means to, he gets on the debate, debate stage. stage. Yeah, we're yeah. off to a great start and, and looking forward to, uh, to sharing our ideas and uh, getting to know America in that way. Uh, you know, I grew up in a holler in West Virginia, the holler of Beaver, West Virginia. Love it. We have a little farm up there and uh, spent uh, most of my adult life in Florida and uh, running companies. Uh, mm-hmm. I was, and then entrepreneurship uh, has been a big part of my life. Started uh, a couple of uh, several companies. And uh, so that's been kind of the where, the cloth that I was cut from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, how did why on earth would you want to get involved in politics? Yeah, it certainly was something I thought I would never do <laughs> after I ran for state senate in Montana in 2012. So Only you lost... moved from Florida to Montana? Yes. Okay, yes. gotcha. And uh, beautiful, for a few years, country. it was just wonderful. And um, we, were, we were part of a, a ministry, a Christian ministry out there. And so uh, I was CEO of a company in Oregon uh, mm-hmm. at the time. And so it worked out logistically. And um, uh, But no, it, it was just fantastic how, how God has worked in our lives uh, to, to bring us to this point. Never thought I would run for another elected office. Lost by 33 votes, was actually relieved that I did not win. Uh, did not want to recount uh, <laughs> because I just didn't want to get into the fray. I, I really wanted to just represent America. I believed in the the fundamentals, the values, the constitution, uh, and and that's what I wanted to represent. And, you know, in the last uh, six, seven years working with governments and sometimes on behalf of the United States in terms of or representing the United States anyway, on the U.S. delegation to South Sudan and uh, in numerous other African mm-hmm. countries on the U.S.-China trade war, uh, speaking in, in China to the CPC and, you know, all of these other countries, uh, I realized just how far America was from what I thought she was and what she used to be. Sure. But but how did you get from West Virginia to Florida to Montana to then Africa and going with U.S. delegations? To, how did how did that happen? Uh, let's get a little slower track so we can get to know you. Didn't <laughs> sure. you tell me earlier? So I was at an event last night, guys, just kind of a meet and greet. And so you mentioned going to college in Knoxville, but it wasn't UT. Right. No. But you did go to college went, in Went Knoxville. to college, yeah, Crown College. Uh, it's a Bible college. Uh, pastor Clarence Sexton there was the founder. Mm. Did you want to be a pastor? I wanted to be in ministry, yes. I wanted to serve the Lord in, in a Christian ministry in some capacity, didn't know what or where. So how and, does that go from that to being an entrepreneur and obviously making a lot of money. Yes. How, how well, did that happen? I'll tell you, uh, you know, while I was in college, uh, I couldn't afford to pay my school bill. I was really yeah. struggling. I was working, uh, you know, from uh, telemarketing jobs, third shift Been security there. jobs, <laughs> <laughs> and there. just anything I could to pay the bills. Mm. And I'll tell you that uh, uh, I started investing in real estate. I got my promotion. I started making $7 an hour and thought I was in the money. So I remembered that parable, you know, in the Bible where, you know, I didn't want to hide my talent. I wanted mm. to invest it. And so I thought I need to learn how to do this. And I would go into, there was books a million back then. And I would uh, would go and sit in there all day Saturdays because I couldn't afford to buy the books and uh, learned how to invest and uh, started doing it. Uh, so just basically you pulled investing. up your, your bootstraps and learned on your yes. own and to figure out, okay, I got to pay my bills. All right. right. I like that story. Right. That's, that's very... Because we all go through that. We all... Oh. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, let me tell you. I mean, when, when, when you've got 20... 25 cents, 27 cents to put in the gas tank just to be able to try to get to a mm-hmm. job interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's where I've been. And and a lot of people who are who are at this level uh, in, in, in U.S. politics or any, or any politics in, around the world uh, have never been there. They don't understand uh, the plight of what most people go through on an average day. Right. They don't know what it's like stopping to get a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk on the way home. They right. haven't even been in a Walmart. Right. They don't need, Yeah, they haven't been in a Walmart and they don't know how much a dozen eggs costs right now and oh, what it cost not. a year and a half ago and the big difference in how that is actually truly affecting 
families. Right. They, they don't know how to work a gas pump. That yeah. happens whenever their drivers aren't right, with them. Right. Uh, but, you know, that, and those aren't prerequisites to being the president. But my goodness, it sure helps to know uh, who you're representing and what they actually struggle with on a daily basis. Right. Yeah, it really does. So that's impressive. So you went from college, pulled up your bootstraps, you learned how to be an entrepreneur and you invested in real estate. Yes, and started and- doing really well, uh, it, you know, in real estate and um, ended up uh, trusting the wrong people. I grew up in a holler, you know, where you could shake a hand and it, your word meant and something. And it meant something. And, mm-hmm. uh, but outside of there, I, I got to know the real world and everyone wasn't who they said that they were. And so I had a lot of learning and growing up mm-hmm. to do starting a little later in life uh, on that journey. And uh, so I ended up losing a lot of it, uh, which was a very good thing for me good because I, once I had it, I thought I'd always have it. And uh, so it taught me a, a lot. And, um, and so then I had to get a, get a job and ended up with a fortune 500 company and working my way up there, ended up having 1500 employees, uh, as a senior director and leader of, uh, of that organization. And, uh, you know, it, it, we ended up, um, uh, leading that, expanding it, and uh, that's what got me into cybersecurity and data security. Right, which interests me very much, and I, I shared that with you last night. All right, we are talking to Roland uh, Roberts. Um, two L's, spell that for us if people want to find you. R-O-L-L-A-N, R-O-L-L-A-N, RolandRoberts.com. No D, no D, and I end up doing that just out of habit, I suppose. All right, so you have... I mean, you're coming from out of nowhere. I right. mean, let's just, yes. uh, let's, yes. here's reality. People have never heard your name. I say that. You've been on like One America News. You told me earlier you actually had a podcast at one point, uh, right? Or a sure, radio yeah, show. with iHeartRadio. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and yeah, so right. you've had that. Um, you've been on Newsmax, you know, that kind of thing. So some people may have heard of you, but the vast majority has not. Right. And you're, you would be competing with some names people have heard of. Mm-hmm. So you have to have a strong plan or you're probably not going to get anywhere. That's right. So what do you think is most important for America before anything else? What do you think will will get America back on track? Well, and this is the entire theme of my campaign. America needs God. There is a war on God and America today. And uh, that is the difference between me and every other candidate. Uh, I believe that me plus God is a majority. Mm. Uh, And uh, I'm in good company. Joseph, nobody had heard of him either when he was in the prison. King David, he wasn't even in the lineup. At least I'm going to be on the ballot. (laughs) So uh, and so I believe. And on the debate stage. And on the debate stage. uh, (laughs) Yes. Looking forward to that. So, you know, for us, we look at it and see that, look, America needs God. He that. He said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. You've got to put him first. All of the policies, you can have the most brilliant policies in the world, and I'm telling you they will fall flat if he's not where he's supposed to be. So that is the that is the first thing that we bring. Then the second, obviously, is we focused on the economy. Mm. People are hurting. Inflation is ridiculous. Our debt's out of control. And uh, all we ever hear about is people talking about reducing the deficit. Uh, and I'm talking about eliminating the debt. How are you going to eliminate the debt? Yeah, well, it's obviously uh, not a, not a one two three thing, but I can tell you the first place to start is by changing the tax system. You've got to get to a tiered flat tax. Uh, you got to stop taxing Social Security, zero so a tax federal income tax on Social Security, zero income tax on the first sixty thousand dollars that people uh, earn. Yeah, and, and, and that, have that would flat affect. Tax. Well, and that would affect if you're doing that. How many people in America make sixty thousand dollars a year or less? Seventy five million. A, yeah, that's a lot. Exact. So that will million. have a a a wonderful effect on those people on their bottom line if that's what they make a year. Absolutely. And then then you mention then you start taxing people if they make seventy five thousand then they only taxed on the fifteen. Or that's the, right. Uh, that difference. Yeah, the fifteen thousand. Uh-huh. Right? right. So yeah, that's interesting well, to me. And I'll tell you that you you not only have seventy five million Americans who who would not have a federal income tax, but that also supports the people who are paying because what they do with their discretionary cash flow at that point. The GDP grows, which we have to get back to a positive GDP growth. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are running at 20 percent of what the leading other leading countries in the world are. Uh, and, and, and obviously, a lot of that's due to the lockdowns and a lot of it's doing to our inflation and uh, our reckless printing of money. Uh, but, uh, but but you've got to fix the tax code, number one. The tax code is 10 times larger than the Holy Bible, and God didn't need that many words to tell right. us how to live a whole, whole life, and it's worked for generations. Right. Good point there. <laughs> All right, so you've got God, 
yes. and you've got the economy. Yes. What interests me about you, and we, we'll take a break here in about four minutes. We're talking to Roland Roberts, who's running for president of the United States. I'm very concerned about cybersecurity issues. Mm-hmm. Not only that, well, we had, um, was it Matt Walsh, I think, is reporting uh, that he was hacked into was. and a lot of his information has been stolen. Now, whether that was deliberate or accident, don't know. But cybersecurity for everybody is a major issue. And AI, mm-hmm. to me, is a major issue and dangerous. And while everybody is all wrapped up in silly fights... Yes. This yes. technology continues to grow and if we're not careful it's going to it's going to surprise us all. Putin said in 2017 whoever is the first to master AGI artificial general intelligence will rule the will rule the, the world. world and it was not an exaggeration and uh, we're still fighting about petty things in the United States and we are about to get it handed to us. Yeah. And that's not good, especially no. if you're talking about China and Russia. Right. Right. Which you you've said you said it last night. I've heard you say it today because I took you around the building to Mm. uh, introduce you to some folks. You said that the next president will be dealing with a war, whether it's World War Three or something else. We will there will be a war that we will be involved without a doubt. Without a doubt. And the presidency has changed. Uh, The the role of the United States president has changed. Obviously, it's actually gotten more constitutional, really, uh, because it forces the president to be focused on what he what, what, what that office is supposed to have, have always been focused on. Uh, but our national security is critical. And, and having the economy strong, a growing economy is one of the greatest uh, uh, securities that you can have when it comes to securing the nation mm-hmm. and, and defending national security. So uh, protecting the homeland, uh, having a strong economy is critical. Strong families are critical to national security. And uh, that's what we are focused on with the having a family czar and having people to strengthen uh, the American family, which is under attack. Mm. Uh, and our children, you know, are not property of the government. Uh, they're given to us by God. And uh, and so we have to maintain and, and support and empower the family unit. Sure. All right. So let's do this. We're going to take a break here, Bell. And when we come back, let's hone in on what your ideas are for national security. I mean, because as you well know, you can blanket and say great words, but it doesn't mean anything unless you have an actual plan. That's right. So I want to hear about that plan when we come back. We're talking to Roland Roberts, who is running for president of the United States. You can find him online, RolandRoberts.com, correct? Yes, All right, there we go. We'll be back in a moment. I'm Pamela Fur on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. It is 1222. Good afternoon. I'm Pamela Fur in for Matt Murphy, who's in for Brian Wilson later on today. And we have in the studio with us a candidate for president of the United States. His name is Roland Roberts. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hit that red button right there. There you go. Glad that you're here. By the way, we're on Super Talk TV so you can see what he looks like. You, know, you can wave at the camera there. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, I think Twitch as well, and of course on all the phone apps and radio apps that you have in the good old fashioned radio here in Middle Tennessee. So, what what brought you here to Middle Tennessee? I, like you said, you graduated college in Knoxville, um, but what brought you here, and why? I I have to ask the basic question here: Why do you think Tennesseans should vote for you? This is strong Trump country. Yes, I'm just being honest. It is strong Trump company. So, or well, country. I, I think I think uh, this election is going to be a referendum on God, first of all, Uh, regardless of who the different uh, candidates end up being, uh, it's going to be a referendum on God. Things are going to get worse before they're going to get better. And just like after 9-11, there were two or three weeks where the country really came together. And uh, I mean, people were praying on air, on TV, and it wasn't, oh, you can't do that. It was, please, somebody around here better have a line to God. (laughs) Somebody needs to start praying somewhere. (laughs) And uh, I, I, I hope it doesn't take tragedy uh, for America to to, uh, get to that place. But I do believe it will be a a referendum there. So I believe that uh, my belief is that there's 210 million people uh, statistically who who uh, profess to believe in God in America. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I only need 90 million of those to win the presidency. (laughs) So uh, I believe that uh, as the church and the people of faith wake up and uh, see that they their their silent majority can make a difference. Uh, I believe we actually, uh, people will vote God over party. Mm, There you go. All right. So a lot of people like 
uh, what you said about the fair tax. Now, you're not doing the general fair tax that's been out there. You're doing, what is it, a graduated? A, a tiered, tiered, yes, that's tiered, a flat, tiered tax, flat tax. Yes. tax. Yeah, which is very different yeah. uh, because that, that the problem with the flat tax is it doesn't solve the problem uh, for those who need it most. And remember, W-2 employment income is the highest taxed income, form mm-hmm. of income in the United States. The people who are working the most are getting taxed the most. Don't it's, it's I amazing. know it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Don't I know it. That is the truth. And then you have the, the small businesses that get taxed to death mm-hmm. that they can't continue to run their business. That's what I have run into a lot on smaller businesses that employ 10 or 15 people, but they're doing, they're successful and then they have to file taxes right. and then it eats away at anything that they can do to continue to grow their company. You know that right. as a businessman. Right. All right. So, all right. Let me ask you a few more questions. We have about five minutes left together, five, six minutes left here. I'll ask you a few more questions and then we'll just send people to your website and and so they can follow you. Um, You are married and you have a baby on the way. Yes. Our first son, uh, my wife, Rebecca, and I uh, are expecting our first son, uh, July 2nd, uh, rolling the third, R3. Uh, It's actually, uh, you know, campaigning with a pregnant wife has been an interesting journey. Obviously, uh, the Internet seemed to have a little bit of fun at our announcement. Uh, (laughs) And, you know, it's it's new for us. And Mm -hmm. and it's our first. I have two daughters from a previous marriage and uh, wonderful. And they're supportive of of this. I met one of them last night. Yes, yes. yes. And, you know, she was part of my my Senate campaign 11 Mm -hmm. years Mm -hmm. ago. Uh, so it's just really special uh, to be able to do it uh, with your family. Uh, but I have, have have a very supportive uh, family. My father's obviously state senator of West Virginia, mm. uh, has been reelected twice there, uh, my, a majority uh, whip uh, there in the Senate, mm. and uh, still pastors the same church, 40 years there in a Christian school. And then, of course, I got my uh, MBA from Liberty University. Yeah, gotcha. All right. Now, I had asked this question the last segment, and I forgot to. we were going to dwindle down mm. on cybersecurity, yes. national security for this country. Give me d- your plan. What? Wh- how are you going to help with the problems that we have in this country with national security? Well, economic, number one. Yeah. Uh, family, number two. Literally, the strength of a nation I, is this based on the strength of a family. I know you say that, I, and I agree yes. with you. But what does but that ha- look like? Yeah, yeah, what does that look like? How sure. does that help me when somebody has hacked into my bank account? Sure. Or, well, first of all, or when people are leaking secrets like this Air National Guardsman did just, right. a, what, a week or so ago that he was caught for. But Right. Uh, well, a, a lot of the people who are, uh, and also the killings as school shootings and yeah, everything else, yeah. I mean, it's all, whether it's Homeland Security or and national security, foreign or domestic, uh, you know, it starts with the family. That's one of the greatest protections we can have as a country because children would not be on apps that are uh, allowed for spying uh, through uh, to mm. other things, not just a matter of ban, well, they don't ban TikTok, right? When it comes to TikTok mm-hmm. uh, and all the other apps, uh, that's a very deep subject, actually. That's uh, quite sinister and interesting. Uh, but I can tell you that artificial intelligence is the, is the next wave of, the, of uh, military and, and, and the future of war. Uh, the wars of the world will most likely be fought over water. Uh, most people don't understand that. Uh, but that is where what, what most wars uh, are and will be fought over. I can tell you that when it comes to Ukraine, obviously uh, the proxy war that we've uh, – unconstitutional war that we've kind of been engaged in there, uh, spend $112 plus billion at this moment. Uh, the entire budget of the CDC is only about eleven, twelve billion, uh, and so it's 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 crazy when you think about what we're doing, and it's not working. Uh, we've tried to have uh, strength through being a bully, mm. and usually that's the weakest form of strength. So uh, you know the three greatest advancement in human warfare ever was obviously the the rifle. Uh, and then nuclear weapons was number two. And then whoever gets to AGI first, artificial general intelligence, uh, that is the next greatest development in human warfare. Are we behind the eight ball? We're very much behind. Uh, I, w- I have a public interview that I did uh, several years ago with the uh, head of AI for the Pentagon. And I was actually really challenging them to be proactive with AGI. But, you know, ultimately, uh, Pamela, it comes down to uh, a lot of people in the United States. We've had it so good so long that they're more interested in where they're going to go eat for dinner tonight Mm -hmm. and what friends they're going to meet for happy hour. Mm -hmm. And our enemies and the people who are working on this in foreign countries, they're working through the night nonstop. Uh, It's because it's absolutely who gets their first wins. Everything. It's winner takes all. 
and, uh, and and so now there there are several that that feel like they're close, but arrogance is what causes our defeat every time. Mm. Would you say that America is a superpower anymore? We we absolutely are a superpower, uh, but we are a declining superpower. Uh, China, you know, the the there's a book called the Hundred Year Marathon uh, by Michael, uh, and uh, uh, he, Michael's book. Uh, he's actually a friend of Robert Swope, Nashville City Council uh, member here. Uh, he uh, what's he, it called again? He, uh, the One Hundred Year Marathon. Okay. And uh, he talks about he was a China hawk for the government, for the State Department for years. And he's one of the few who finally realized the way the Chinese pray, play. And, and, you know, when you look at BRICS, what's happened there over the last few weeks, uh, you know, I was on the U.S. delegation to South Sudan the last few years, the, the world's newest country. We gave birth to that nation. And even they abandoned the U.S. dollar about mm-hmm. a month ago. Uh, that's absolutely amazing whenever people in third world countries don't want your money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where we are. And by the way, if with the de-dollarization and uh, the inflation and them moving away from the U.S. dollar as the world standard, uh, that means our sanctions are worthless, which means the only other option you have besides sanctions is to fight, uh, to try to maintain your position and your dominance. And America will not go down without a fight. And, and there are better ways. So we have to focus on increasing the the AI capabilities of our military. We have to strengthen our military. And we have not. Period. We have yeah. we have focused on making it woke. We've focused on making helping these these people find themselves. And what we really need to be teaching is how to defend Americans. Yeah. Amen to that. I hate this. We've uh. run out of time. <laughs> we have run out. It's, it's, in fact, I'm a little over time. Uh, where can people find you if they want to hear more about you, see other interviews, donate to your campaign? Obviously, you ha- are coming back to Tennessee. Absolutely. And, and meeting more people and whatnot. It's and God we- country, not Trump country. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. They can find you on your website. It's RolandRoberts.com. Right? R-O-L-L-A-N Roberts. Dot com. Yes, All right, yes. we got it. Nice to meet you. It's been a pleasure. Thank very, you. Uh, very much interested in continuing to hear what else you have to say in the future. So, And, and look forward to you on the debate stage. 1231, I'm Pamela Fur on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.